Hi. Hi there. How are you? I am good. It is nice to meet you of sorts. Nice, nice <laughs> to meet you too. Hold on, let me put my video on real quick. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> so how are you uh, How are you doing in the middle of this crazy world we're living in right now? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's been so crazy, and, but I feel like stuff has definitely kept going. Business has kept going and stuff like that, which is good, but... It's been so crazy not going outside and, <laughs> and all that. We really have to learn, or at least I have learned, how to look harder for the good things. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And there are a lot of days where I don't even put the energy into looking for the good things. <laughs> I just sit and wallow in the bad. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. Sometimes I'm just in the bed because it's just one of those days, but yeah. <laughs> so have you listened to the show before? Do you know how it works? Yes, I listen to it almost every day because my grandma keeps the radio on. And so I always try to listen to your segment at 12 and stuff. You have some interesting people on. So yeah, absolutely. I do try. Some of them a little more interesting than others. <laughs> 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 a lot of them are regular, so that makes it a little oh, bit easier right. for me. There are um, some people that come on for a regular slot every single month, and I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't always understand from the outside looking in is between all of the regulars with Tourism Tuesdays and the Chambers and Lieutenant Guys Now, I only usually at the end of a month only have about five to seven days where wow. I can go out and find somebody wow. to do the show because the rest of them are already kind of spoken for. So Right, right. Wow. Okay. Okay. And then this pandemic turned all of that upside down. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has. Yeah. But I am loving Zoom. I have joked and <laughs> And I'm not sure how much I'm actually still joking about it, but I may never go back to a live show in the studio ever again. Zoom has definitely been a lifesaver. I will agree with that. <laughs> so what do you want to make sure that we talk about today? Give me some points that you want to make sure that we cover. Um, basically what Cook's Creed Foundation is about and why it was started. Okay. Um... We have a um, raffle that's going on for a private dinner for four that's going on right now to raise money for um, a team we want to send to the World Food Championships. Um, let's see, what else? And your background is as a chef, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, those are probably the two main things that, that I kind of want to hit, but just kind of want to talk about what the foundation is about and why we started and what we kind of do in it. And yeah, kind of go okay. from there. And yeah. do I pronounce your name Kisha or Keisha? Keisha. Keisha. Okay. Yes. I always like to ask because <laughs> I don't want to get it wrong <laughs> when we're on the air. Right. <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't matter if people tell me how to pronounce it. <laughs> I get it wrong anyway. <laughs> There are a lot of complicated last names out there. I am so yes, glad versus yes. Washington. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, what we'll do is we'll record two 10, 12-minute long segments. Okay. So I record the intro and everything when we're doing it in the Zoom, and then we'll go to break after the first 10 or 12 minutes, and then we can talk for a few minutes about what we didn't talk about in the first segment that we want to make sure we cover in the second. And okay. And then we record the second segment, and we're done. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and start the timer. Hello, and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Monday as you are listening to the show today. However, we have pre recorded our conversation via Zoom with Keisha Washington. She is the founder of Cooks. Creed Foundation. And Keisha, I feel like I should say cook zzz because yes. it does have a Z on the end. It's not really an S. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I am so glad that you reached out to me and wanted to be a guest on the show because I think that this foundation that you have started is a really cool concept. Uh, but before we get into that, tell me a little bit about you because Obviously, Cook's Creed means that you are a chef in some form. Tell me a little yes. bit about you and your background. Yes. So um, I'm Keisha Washington, and I am the 
chef and owner of three culinary industry businesses. Um, I'm super excited because two of those businesses are here in Virginia, one's in Maryland. Um, and Cook's Creed Foundation has recently taken off. Um, so just kind of a little bit of background about what I do. My first love, of course, is food. And <laughs> I'm a chef in my first business called The Key Ingredient LLC. And I do private dining and chef table experiences for the DMV area and as well, I travel all over the place too. So, <laughs> so always it's nice to get a gathering of people together and do a nice private dinner. Um, in my second business, it's called the Kitchen Spectrum Collective. It's a one-stop shop chef platform that gives you everything from website building to branding to menu development. Um, mentorship. It gives you a number of different things. A lot of times chefs do not have that one-stop shop where you can kind of get everything in one place and that's kind of what I wanted to bring to the table. Um, and then of course the baby of the business <laughs> is Cook Screen Foundation which is um, fairly new. We started in April and has quickly taken off. <laughs> so I'm super excited because Cook's Creek Foundation um, is a foundation that has a number of different things that we offer. So first thing that we offer is um, scholarships and funding and grants for culinary students. Um, we have a kind of a Let's see how I want to put this. We have a number of different items that culinary chefs and culinary students have to go through in order to get through culinary programs. Um, we have to go through a number of testing and have a number of materials. And I kind of wanted to provide something for those particular type of individuals to get chef jackets and knives and um, books, anything that they may need to go into the culinary program. So that's the first thing that we offer. So being a chef isn't as simple as saying, hey, I'm a great cook. I'm just going to go out and do this. There, You have to go through a process. There are, you know, much like becoming a real estate agent or a hairdresser yes, or any absolutely. of these other trades, being a chef is also one of the trades. It's exactly, exactly. And it, and there's so many things that go into being a chef. Like you said, not just the food and not just cooking, but you have to know how to plan a menu. You have to know your food costs. You have to know um, what your allergies of your clients are, um, how to talk to clients, how to even get your clients. So it's a number of things um, that kind of goes into being a chef. So I kind of wanted to provide that in the organization. The second, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just going to say, I remember the first time I ever watched Top Chef oh, on Bravo. One of my favorite shows. <laughs> and I could not understand, you know, initially I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be cool. I'm going to watch them prepare these really cool dishes. But they really do get in the weeds too about, they because there's always one episode where they have to do exactly what you're saying yes. and plan a menu and run a restaurant. They have to set a restaurant up. And that isn't something that I think most people think of top of yeah. mind when they think about a chef having to have all of these different abilities and skill levels and talent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, that's the good thing, I guess, about social media and television is that they kind of give you the concepts of what a chef looks like, what we kind of do, but they don't necessarily always give you the background information. Um, or what we do behind the scenes, behind the kitchen, <laughs> you know, they don't give you those kind of options. So that's one of the things that I wanted the organization to kind of hit on is there are other things that you may need to get to those points or get your goals, um, reach your goals, um, and reach other parts of the culinary industry that you may need. So, um, so yeah, so that's the first part of what we do in the organization. The second part is we provide 
um, mental health awareness resources to our culinary chefs. And this part, I feel like it's near and dear to my heart because a lot of my family members, a lot of my friends work in the mental health field. Um, and I find that there is a lot of mental health issues and problems in the culinary field. Chefs are always trying to be the best. We're always trying to be one up on the other. Um, we're always trying to move forward, always trying to get ahead. And sometimes that perfection, that trying to be the best can sometimes weigh on you. And it's not really talked about um, in the culinary field. It's kind of like, if you're the head chef, you gotta keep your head down. You gotta do that 60 hours. <laughs> you gotta get the work in. Um, but nobody's really talking about the times that we mess up or we make mistakes um, or we're not ready for the day and we're just kind of down. No one really talks about those things. So I wanted to provide um, some resources that chefs and other people can kind of go to and actually be able to get the things that they need within the culinary field. So I'm super excited about that part, yeah. It's a really high pressure field. I mean, it really in addition is. to just, I mean, there's a timing aspect of it because it's not like, you know, I we're recording this now on Zoom and we started recording at a certain time, but the truth of the matter is it could take us an hour and a half to record this show. It's not that big of a deal. Right, right. Preparing a meal for somebody, you've yes. got timing to deal with. And yes. then there's also the perspective of what if the person you're serving it to doesn't like it? Oh. Or not, or, you know, there's <laughs> yes. this judgment that goes yes. along with it. There are so many aspects. Yes, absolutely. A chef, not, not even just a head chef, that I can right. imagine where you spend a lot of time in your head, which isn't always the safest place probably to be. Correct, correct. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's one of the things that I find, especially for myself, and, and I'm sure other, other chefs can feel this way, is that when it's crunch time and you got to get a meal done, there's so many emotions that go into that. You're happy that the food is tasting good, but you're also worried that it might not taste good. You're worried about what the clients are going to say. You're worried about just a number of things in, in that particular moment. And it's not really talked about as often um, as we kind of like it to be. So I kind of wanted to provide that kind of platform just so chefs can have the opportunity to talk. That, that's the main thing, is to open up conversation about mental health, sobriety, and a number of other things that chefs kind of go through in the field. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting, years ago, probably 100 years ago when I was younger, <laughs> <laughs> I used to run with a crowd, as they say. There used to be a restaurant in Winchester in the Apple Blossom Mall called The Ground Round, and oh, it was okay. our hangout. It was where right. I went, you know, when we would go hang out there, and I got to know all of the people that worked there. A lot of them were chefs, and yeah. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And the thing yeah. that I always thought was strange is they all understood that they were struggling and they knew that other people and uh, other chefs in their industry were struggling, but they didn't know what to do with that. They didn't right. have a place to go exactly. or an outlet. And that's kind of what you're hoping to provide with this particular arm of the foundation. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I want to provide a place where chefs can come. Even, even the chefs that are in fast food or in fine dining or your private chef or um, your Peter. culinary instructor, any, anybody, because there are a number of levels to mental health um, and it can run the gamut from fast food all the way up to fine dining. So yes, providing a platform for chefs is, um, is a huge thing in, in the mental health resource awareness. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that there were three things. We've talked about two. Can we take a quick break and then come back and talk about the third part of what the foundation does? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Keisha Washington. She is the founder of Cook's Creed Foundation, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes for more of this conversation with her. 
Yay! <laughs> How easy that was. That was easy. <laughs> It was funny yesterday I recorded today's show that'll air today and right. and and it's funny because the show that I recorded yesterday that's airing today was actually the show that was supposed to air Monday oh, when you and I were coordinating, but then right. they sent me a text and said, I know we're in phase three, but we still don't have all the answers. It was Frederick County oh, Parks and Rec, right, and right. they still didn't have the answer. So I'm like, holy crap, where at two o'clock on a Friday am I going to find a guest for Monday? Oh, right, right. So I ended up calling the station owner and said, hey, Andrew, you want to log on to Zoom with me on Sunday afternoon and talk about what it's like owning a radio station. Right, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, they oh, were joking wow. yesterday because they do a live show. They get uh, four shows a year because oh, okay. they're also okay. a regular advertiser, but they've done a lot of live shows and they were joking yesterday about how they felt like the time goes faster when right. we're doing it this way on Zoom than when we're. Yes, I can understand that. Show. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so in the second segment, we'll cover the third piece of what you do. Okay. And then we'll talk about the fundraiser. Okay. Is there anything else? Um, let's see. Oh, probably what it was started, what Cook's Creed was started on. Okay. Why, the reason why it was started. Yeah. All right, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll come back and ask you that. Okay. And then use that as the lead in to talk about the third piece of what okay. you do. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Monday as you are listening to the show. However, we have pre-recorded our conversation with Keisha Washington over Zoom on a Thursday after or Thursday morning, actually. She is the founder of Cook's Creed Foundation. In the first segment, Keisha, we talked a little bit about some of the different services that you provide under the foundation. But mm -hmm. I'm curious, why did you start a foundation? I mean, you mentioned at the very beginning of the show that you've got all of these different uh, businesses and balls in the air. You already <laughs> right. had two. Why start a third in the form of a foundation? So I started Cook's Creek Foundation. Um, it was actually an idea of me and my fiance's idea. Um, and we wanted to help the underdog chef. We wanted to help the person that may have the skills that may have the talent but maybe it's not seen enough maybe it's not getting enough recognition um, that's kind of the basis that we wanted to start it on and it was something that we had been working on for a very long time um, but um, in the midst of everything kind of going on um, he passed away in january and um, I wanted to carry that legacy for him. And so I dedicated Cook's Creek Foundation to him. So, wow. yeah, so I wanted to carry on that dream, carry on that reality um, that chefs can help each other, even through the midst of mental illness, through the midst of having that underdog mentality um, that we can kind of get through anything. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of why I started the foundation in the first place. Yeah. And on top yeah. of everything else, you started in April in the middle yes. of a pandemic. <laughs> yes, in the middle of a pandemic, yes. <laughs> you literally have no fear of anything, it yes. sounds like. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So you mentioned in the first segment, we were talking about the mental health resources that the foundation yeah. offers. We talked a little bit about the other resources that you offer to culinary students and other chefs in training. What is, mm -hmm. but you said there are three things that the foundation offers. What is that third thing? So the third thing that we offer is mentorship. And this is probably one of our biggest programs because Chefs need a mentor. They need someone to go to, to talk to, to help them out in situations where there may not be enough chefs and you need someone to help you out for a private dinner. Um, or you're maybe looking for a job and they have some good connections. So to me, I feel like it's important to have that mentorship program um, that chefs can go to and have someone 
right in the field as they are. Yeah. And that's tough too, because we all know no matter what type of job you have or what field you're in, it does sometimes come down to who you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We don't like to say that, but sometimes it's who you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So because this is a foundation, are you a 501c3? So we are actually working towards that. Um, Virginia is, for our setup for Virginia, it is a nonprofit. So we're actually working to, towards uh, 501c3 as we speak, yeah. So how do you do fundraising? How do you raise money in order to provide some of these services to the culinary, uh, I forget, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but the culinary people. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we, um, we do, we have a couple of different things that's going on. We're fundraising right now. Our biggest fundraising, um, idea that's happening right now is, um, we are offering a private dinner for four, which is super exciting because it's one of our chefs that will come to your home and cook a private dinner for you. The raffle is $20, and basically you put in a $20 raffle ticket into the bucket, and in July, the middle of July, we'll call a number, and if you win, you get a, yourself a private dinner with one of our excellent chefs. So I'm super excited about that because that's what we do. <laughs> we love doing private dinners. Um, and the other fundraising way that we kind of um, bring in money is we, we offer a number of different products on our site. So if you go to the Cook's Creed Foundation website, which is cookscreedfoundation.org, it's with a Z, <laughs> um, you will see um, in the Get Involved page, there is, um, there is a section on there where you can actually enter in any particular amount and you can actually get a um, kind of like a gift with whatever you donate. So there is a t-shirt that has our Cook's Creed logo on it. There is um, a apron, a chef's apron that you can get that has, that's tailored to you and um, that you can use for the kitchen, for your home cooking <laughs> and all that. There is some other options in there such as um, a gold, there's a, di a gold and diamond bracelet that you can get and a couple of other things that you can get with a donation. So there's different ways that we kind of bring in some money that will help um, with what's going on. That sounds awesome. So how would somebody reach out to you if, because I know that, and I'm not sure if all of the schools in the surrounding area in the Shenandoah Valley offer it, but I know Warren County in particular has a culinary program. Oh, yes, uh, Devin yes. ran that program for years. We did a couple of videos and he's done a show or two with me in the past. Yes. But if somebody is listening right now and they want to reach out to you to get these resources, how do they go about doing that? What's the best way for them to do that? Okay, so best way is to reach out to the website. The website, again, is cookscreedfoundation.org. It's with a Z. Um, they can also, on that website, there is a couple of different forms that they can fill out with their name and their email address um, so we can reach back out to you. I can also be reached at the email address, which is cookscreedfoundation at gmail.com, and that can be... Um, that can be sent to me at any particular time. Um, but the best way is to go to the website because all the information that you need for scholarships, for mental health resources, for the mentorship program, for fundraising, everything is on the website for you. Yeah. Are you seeing an increase with everybody being home now? I, I know that we talked in the first segment about Top Chef, and I know that yes. all of these cooking shows that you see on TV now are starting to have kid versions because yes. kids at a younger and younger age are getting involved. I had a, a, a guest on last month from the Extension Office that was talking about how if you get kids involved in growing their food and preparing mm. their food, they're mm. more likely to eat 
eat something that's a little more healthier for them right. than a bag of potato chips. Right, exactly, exactly. Are you seeing that kind of across the board from the, the community that you're involved in? Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of kid chefs or student chefs have been asking, you know, where can I get a mentor? Where can I find these resources that will help me move to the next level? Um, so yes, I have seen an increase when it comes to kids coming through the door, wanting some funding, wanting to get help for jackets, um, for knives, and a number of different things. So yes, it has been an increase lately that everybody has been home. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and it's interesting too that you talk about the jackets and the knives because we all have within our own businesses or our jobs, the tools. Like yes. for me, it's got to be the laptop and I've got the microphone and there are things that we just either have to have in order to do our job or we need to have to do our jobs easier. And I think most people think, well, if you're a chef, you just show up at a restaurant and you use whatever they have there. Right, and that's right. not at all the case. That's a huge no. misconception. That is a misconception because whenever, I know when I do my private dinners, I'm bringing everything, my jacket, my knives, my pots and pans, my food. I'm bringing everything to cook in your home. And that's what a lot of times that a lot of people don't understand is that there is a number of things and a number of steps that go into being a private chef in your home or being a personal chef in your home um, or just going to the restaurant. Um, a lot of times when you go out to the restaurant, you don't see what happens in the kitchen. There is, <laughs> there is a number of moving parts. You have your head, head chef, you have your sous chef, um, and there are so many moving parts um, that you don't get to see. You kind of just see when your food comes out, which is great, <laughs> right? But um, there are moving parts in the back of the kitchen that have to be done in a certain order, in a certain way. Um, and, to, and it's important. It's important when it comes to your food. It's important. <laughs> Everything that I know about being a chef or cooking, I've learned from a television show. So I'm probably right. not the best person right. <laughs> to be right. able. This is why it was so great when you reached out to me. I thought, finally, a real person is going to tell me whether <laughs> half of this stuff is true and how much right. of it is just TV. Right, exactly, exactly. So before we wrap up, tell me one more time, what is the web address and do you have any social media outlets that you also want to direct people to? Okay, so the website address again is Cook's Creed Foundation with a Z. Um, it's cookscreedfoundation.org. And um, like I said, everything can be sent there if you're looking for men mentorship, mental health resources, and some scholarships and funding and grants. Everything will be on the website. You can reach out to me at cookscreedfoundation at gmail.com. Um, shoot me an email at any particular time. Some social media outlets. We are on Instagram at Cook's Creed Foundation. Um, if you're looking for chef services, I'm on Instagram myself, which is Chef Kish, K-I-S-H underscore D-Y-A-N. Um, and I post a lot of food photography and stuff on there as well. Um, and then... Yeah, so those are a number of ways to, I can be reached out to. And to get a raffle ticket, they can do that from the website, and that's yeah. only 20 bucks, and it's it goes to a bucks. great cause. <laughs> right, it's 20 bucks. It, your name goes into a hat, and then we pick in the middle of um, July, I believe the last day is July 15th. We pick a number, and you could possibly win a private dinner for four, which would be excellent in your home. <laughs> I am totally going to go get one of those as soon as we're done recording. And if I win, we'll have to make a whole other radio show out of that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, we are going to wrap up our conversation today with Keisha Washington. She is the founder of Cook's Creed Foundation. You can find all of the information that we talked about today, resources, raffle tickets, and how you can donate to help support her foundation at cookscreedfoundation.org. Keisha, thank you so much for taking some thank time you. out of your day to meet up with me on Zoom. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Tomorrow is Tourism Tuesday, and I have, as I'm sitting here with Keisha on a Thursday morning, I have already recorded tomorrow's show <laughs> on Tourism Tuesday because 
I left my house and I wow. went to meet Carrie Hahn for the Shenandoah County edition of Tourism Tuesday. And we went to Shenandoah Vineyards. Nice. So, I know. I was pretty wow. excited to leave my house and go out into the wow. world for a change. That's a great trip right there. <laughs> so maybe back here tomorrow, a few minutes afternoon, and that conversation with Carrie and Ivy from Shenandoah Vineyards will be ready to go for you to listen to. I'll see you back here tomorrow. All right. Yay! <laughs> done, done, and done. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a great idea what you're doing. I mean, all the Thank way around. You. Um, Thank you. When I went over, we at one point about a year or two ago, we had toyed with an idea of doing a a valley today that was video. We were oh. going to do a YouTube show oh, and nice. it wasn't okay. going to be so much the interview part, but it was going to be where my guests tried to teach me something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now that's interesting. Oh yeah. So it didn't last because we, oh. we well, <laughs> mostly it didn't last because we had somebody who was doing the professional video stuff but then they got busy and couldn't right. coordinate with us. But we did one on gardening and potting oh, plants nice. and that sort of thing. And then I went over to the uh, to Blue Ridge Technical Center in, Warren, in Front Royal and Devin right. did a class on how to make jerk chicken kebab oh, or something. That sounds good. <laughs> so, but yeah, they've got an awesome culinary program over there. I don't think wow. Frederick or Clark or any of the other schools offer it, but Warren County does. And Devin's yeah. a chef. Um, local chef, a lot of people know him. He does a lot, of the, but their class even does catering jobs to raise oh, money and nice. stuff like that. So, okay, okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. That would be really good. I have, to, I probably have to see if I can reach out to them because that would be really good. Yeah, they, yeah. they would be a great resource for you okay. and vice versa. So. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Okay, I'll have to reach out to them. Yeah. All right, my dear. Well, this will air on Monday, a few minutes right. afternoon. The podcast uh, recording of it will go up on the website shortly after. And okay. if you like, we can use the video from the Zoom and I can throw it up on the YouTube channel too. That's totally up to you. Either or, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to ask. I mistakenly just assumed for one right. of the shows and threw it up there and then got a, a an email that said, um, hey, you didn't tell me the video was going to go up. And I'm like, okay, All so right. now I just ask. <laughs> no, I'm okay with it. <laughs> All right, my dear. Well, you have a great 4th of July weekend. Okay, you too. You too. See ya. All right, bye.